Hey, what's up, video creators? Welcome to this episode of Forge Media. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter f 2.8 lens. And I want to take a look at three things. I want to look at why I like this lens in particular. I want to look at why you should think about investing in a wide angle lens such as this. And I'm going to also talk about why it took me so long to get one of these lenses. But I want to do that in reverse. So let's start with why it took me so long to get a wide angle lens. Well, first of all, wide angle lenses are so expensive. If you haven't looked up uh, prices on wide angle lenses, um, I, I saw that Nikon was selling a 14 millimeter for $2,000. Now, for some of you, that might be in your budget, but I bet for most of you, um, that's gonna break the bank a little, and I'm not sure if a wide angle lens for you is worth $2,000. For me, it's not. So I had to find something that, first of all, I could actually afford. Now, I'm not saying that the $2,000 lens isn't worth $2,000. It might be, it might not be, I'm not sure. But personally, it's not in my budget and I would be willing to bet it's not in a lot of yours. So what do we do about that? So I went on a hunt to find a wide angle lens that wasn't going to break the bank and I found this one. But before I get into the review of this lens, I want to talk about why I like wide angle lenses um, in general. So there's a couple reasons. One is it's perfect for wide um, establishing shots or landscape shots of buildings or landscapes or something like that. It is the perfect lens for that situation. Also, if you're ever thinking about doing any sort of real estate photography or videography, you're going to want a wide angle lens, especially for smaller rooms such as this bathroom. Um, this is in my house. This is one. This is the smallest bathroom I've ever seen in a house. We call it our airport bathroom. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's hard to pull your pants down in this bathroom. So taking a picture of this bathroom can be very difficult, but with a wide angle lens, it's totally doable. But it also works for bigger rooms in a house. It makes the even bigger rooms just feel more majestic than they already are. So another advantage to wide angle lenses is the depth of field. It is so easy with a wide angle lens to get everything in focus. So if you take a look at this shot here, you can see that the uh, field goal post is in focus and 100 plus yards away, um, the back building there is also in focus. And it was very easy to just make sure all of that was in focus. I just set my focus to infinity and it pretty much got everything in focus. And that's very easy to do with a wide angle lens. Also, another great thing about wide angle lenses is the lack of vibration. So I wanted to test this a little bit. So in this shot you're about to see, I basically took my tripod, put it in my hands, and I was shooting this direction but I was walking straight and looking straight. So I wasn't even looking at the viewfinder. I just held my camera up and started walking straight. And this is the result I got. Honestly, I don't think this shot is too bad. I mean, it does need a little bit of work to it before I would use it in something corporate or some, some big deal video. Um, but I think it's totally usable with a little bit of post-production work, especially taking into consideration that I wasn't even looking at the viewfinder and I was walking without a glide cam. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. Look at that. That is some gorgeous pixels right there. That's beautiful. Now, I, that's why I would say it's worth your time to think about investing in a wide angle lens. So with that being said, I'm going to take a look at the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter f 2.8 lens and why I chose to go with this one. So like I said before, wide angle lenses are so expensive and it wasn't in my budget to spend $2,000 on a wide angle lens. So I went out and tried to find the best thing um, for the least amount of money. So this lens in particular has a 104 degrees field of view. So you're not getting the 180 fisheye look, um, which I feel for most cases is a little too extreme, um, especially for video. Now the build quality on this, I would personally say it's really good. Um, it, it's fairly heavy, so that tells me that there's some decent glass in here, so it's gonna produce some decent results. And you can also see that with these um, videos that you're seeing on your screen right now, you can see what this actually produces. And I don't know, just heavier lenses appeal to me more because that just makes it feel a little more hefty and it, like, it can take a little bit more of a beating when I'm traveling around with it and stuff. One huge selling point for me is I love lenses that take in a lot of light. What that does is it'll decrease the amount of noise in your image and it'll just look so much more crisp and so much better. And this lens in particular has a 2.8 f-stop. So that means it's so much faster 
than most of the lenses that you'll see at this price point. So for that reason, I decided to go with a $400 lens. Yeah, for some of you who are just starting out, $400 is a lot of money. Um, but quite honestly, when it comes to the lenses, that's that's pretty cheap, especially for wide angle lenses and what you can get with wide angle lenses and what you can do with them. I personally think $400 was a steal. But with that being said, I don't wanna just tell you about the good things about this lens without being honest about the bad. Um, there's just a few things that I would improve, um, but quite honestly, I wouldn't stop you from um, at least thinking about investing in a lens like this, if not this one in particular. Um, some of the problems include the lens cap. Um, I kind of think they skimped out on the lens cap. The lens is fairly high quality and I really like the lens, but the lens cap is, it seems very, I mean, it, it, it obviously is plastic and it just seems very low quality plastic and like it, it would be easy to break. I mean, it's kind of, it's doing its job. It covers the lens. Um, it keeps the lens from being uh, destroyed or anything, but Honestly, I, it just kind of makes me worried because it doesn't feel um, like if it were to take a huge hit that it would uh, protect my lens too much. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Also, another thing I noticed is when I'm manually focusing this, um, you have from one foot of distance where it's focusing one foot away. You also have all the way up to seven feet of focus. And then past that is infinity. So when you get to infinity, you're basically saying, Everything past seven feet, get that in focus. When I turn this, it goes a little bit past infinity. I would assume that that means if you turn it all the way, you're at infinity, right? Well, that's what you would think. Um, but I've noticed that if I go that far, um, everything in that infinity zone gets out of focus. I'm not entirely sure why, um, but it's, it's honestly just something you need to be aware of. And um, I am aware of it, so when I go to focus, I just make sure that it is just um, right below or right at infinity um, and not past it so things aren't out of focus. And I mean, just keep a good eye on um, your viewfinder and what is in focus and what isn't. And the last thing I do want to point out is also about focus. Um, this lens with my particular camera does not autofocus. So personally, I have the Nikon D5300, so that's the camera, the DSLR, that um, does not autofocus with this lens. Um, if you want a full list of Nikon cameras that this um, is not autofocus compatible with, here's all the Nikon cameras. Overall, I totally recommend this lens. Um, I think it's a great start out option if you're looking to um, increase your lens collection and just add a new look to your videos. If you want this lens, um, you can check out the links in the description. Um, I also put the Canon version. Um, I haven't tried out the Canon version, so don't take my word for it, but I would assume that it's very similar to the Nikon version. I wouldn't see why it isn't. Um, they just have a different mount on it to mount two Canon cameras. From what it looks like, they seem the same. But I know the Nikon one is awesome. You can check out both those links in the description below. But I also want to know, what lens is your favorite lens? Um, personally, I this this one is becoming one of my favorites. So what is your favorite lens? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. And if you want to see future videos and future reviews um, on media creation and video creation, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got a new video coming out every week. So I will see you guys next week, and thanks for watching.